Uh, Sam, everything good in Australia? Ready to go? Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambudasa Namo Tasa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambudasya Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Homage to the Blessed Noble and Perfectly Enlightened One Namo Sadanto Suchedo Ye Olahudi Samyao Samputo Shi Namo Sadanto Suchedo Ye Olahudi Samyao Samputo Shi Ushang Shen Shen Wei Miao Fa Bai Xian Wan Jie Nan Sao Yu Supreme and wondrous Dharma, subtle and profound, rarely is encountered even in millions of eons. But now we see and hear it and accept it reverently. May we truly understand the Buddha's actual meaning. 
Shishong Dajia, Ami Tofo, Venerable Master, Dhamma friends, welcome. Glad you're all here. Nice to see you. Actual living beings, humans with eyes and breathing and looking back at me and sitting there. We're all sharing the same oxygen here in the Buddha Hall. That's special. I don't take that for granted because my uh, experience in the last two and a half years has been to uh, speak to a, a group of super sincere Dharma friends in Australia, but usually two or three or four of them. And the rest of the time I'm talking to a laptop display, which is hard to get that that essential spark of feedback to make you want to uh, uh, communicate clearly. You know. So it's delighted to see you all here. We have a nice Christmas tree. We are uh, one week away from the big holiday in uh, certainly here in North America. Or, uh, if you look at the marketplace around the world too. Uh, so Christmas is upon us. Tonight we will be reviewing our Dharma carols, so I hope you all remember them from last year. You all don't look okay, so that's all right. It'll be a surprise for you then. Uh, we have adapted Buddhist lyrics to some of the most beloved Christmas carols. So that's coming up, and uh, we are uh, in, we are close to the solstice, which is really the the news uh, in the universe is the solstice. Solstice means sun stands. I found out in the Latin for that. And it's the time when, here's the sun, and we orbit like this, <whistles> like this. We don't orbit flat. We're 21 and a half degrees slanted off tabletop flat. It would be zero degrees if we went around the table. But here's the sun. So we go like this. And when we are down here, uh, is it here or here? In our journey around this 365 days to go around, we get the least amount of sun. That's the winter solstice. When it's the other side, we get the maximum amount of sun for our part of the planet, and that's the summer solstice. And so the days are short, the nights are long in the winter solstice. And at that point, at the maximum point, it turns and s the new year begins from the sun's point of view. And essentially that's when spring begins. It's the first day of winter, but it's the, the from that moment on, the days get longer, the nights get shorter. More sun, less dark. So, uh, what humans do at that point is we crave the light. We look for the light. So if you look at cultures worldwide, what happens is we bring light into our lives. We have uh, Kwanzaa, we have uh, Diwali, the festival of lights. We have uh, Amitabha, and what is his name? Liang Guang, limitless light. Uh, we have Christmas. So. The, the can't the uh, if I could for those of you now Jerry can't turn that that camera is calibrated on me so I won't will ask him to turn it but if you could turn it you'd see a very pretty Christmas tree with a Buddha on the top we have a Buddha ornament sitting on top of our tree so this is uh, we Buddhists too do uh, we bring light in uh, at the end of the at this time of the year because we uh, our cells, our blood cells, our the photon requirements for our bodies uh, require more light, more sunlight. And so what we do is we celebrate festivals of light. And that's coming right up this week. So just to, uh, to point that out. Okay. Um, what do we? What do Chan meditators do at the end of the, the year? Is we we sit. They say there's a phrase in the Chan school that says, "Winter Chan, summer study." So when the nights are brief and short, and the sun doesn't set till 8:30 or 9 p.m., that's the time to uh, feed the left brain and learn language, learn principles, learn concepts. 
and use a lot of words. And then at this time of the year, we, we sit still and we focus the light inside the body. And so the uh, Buddhists are here. We've adapted our calendar for the long run for the, the, the winter and the summer. Let's continue with our protocols here and do some invoking of spiritual presence. Here we go. This is my, uh, once I decided to follow instructions and regain my connection with music. This was my second musical instrument, a fretless Kevin Enoch banjo. So very simple, very plain, no frets. Looks like a monk's instrument, doesn't it? And it's got a nice, quiet, uh, spiritual, plunky sound. So, here we go. fretless banjo lets you do is this. All right. Thank you, thank you. Sounds so good to have our choir. My goodness. Gee whiz. And the ancestral and unseated meaning they didn't give it away white people came and took it. The ancestral and unceded land of the Chochenyo Ohlone people. Uh, oh, wait a minute. This is, doesn't, this is ungrammatical. Let me correct it here. Um, the Chochoni, Chochenyo Ohlone people practice their spiritual connections oops try again on to land all creation on the sea the Chochenyo Ohlone and people here we go practice their spiritual connections to land it to all creation on this, on their ancestral and unceded land. Here we go. Practice their spiritual, spiritual connections 
to the earth and to all creation here on their ancestral and seeded land for tens of thousands there. Okay. Practice there's physics. Okay, got it. The Chochenyo Ohlone people practice their spiritual connections to the earth and to all creation here on their ancestral and unceded land for tens of thousands of years. Today we acknowledge them as the traditional custodians of the lands on which we live, learn, work, and where all activities take place. We recognize all First Nations peoples as the original storytellers of these lands. We offer our respect to their elders past, present, and emerging, and to all First Nations people whose sovereignty was never ceded. Again, that's the same point. It's that the land was taken. Uh, it wasn't offered. And yet, uh, I, yeah, so we'll let that, let that settle for a while. Okay. So, uh, how's everyone doing? Read an interesting comment today that San Francisco is the most lonely, the, the streets of San Francisco are the most lonely of any major metropolitan area in America. 40% of the commercial workspace in San Francisco is currently occupied, 60% is vacant, and the streets are empty. <laughs> is that our new reality? I don't know if that's East Bay, is that true for us in the East Bay? I don't know. So, interesting time to, uh, to be alive. Another fact I read by perusing the pages of the San Francisco Chronicle is that the hospitals are full at the moment with, with COVID patients. So everyone here, I'm telling our friends in Australia that everybody here, except me, is masked, which I think is interesting. Uh, the reason being that COVID is uh, just around the corner. It's not gone. Furthermore, people also are filling up hospitals with the flu and with MERS which is Middle Eastern SARS, which is a lot of people brought back from the World Cup. Um, so lots of respiratory illnesses around. So we don't want to let our guard down. And it's a good time. Is, is my voice loud enough in the back? Jin Weisher, can you hear me? Good, thank you. So um, it's a good time to, to stay alert uh, and to practice your Medicine Buddha Mantra. Um, highly recommend it. Personal experience with reciting that mantra in public spaces and feeling good that there's something to do that is connected to our faith, you know, to our, to our religious identity, to our spiritual identity, and that you feel like you're actually improving any space that you enter. One reason, just by not being afraid or upset or depressed or anxious and instead that we're sending out a wholesome vibration. Um, a couple of weeks ago we were talking about Buddhism and science. Anybody wants to make a contribution to, uh, to spiritual technology, invent something that shows the vibrations that come from somebody who's reciting a mantra. Wouldn't it be nice to have a mantra scope? And so you walk in front of it, and if you're going, Namo Sadanto Suche Doye Olaudi, you're just sending out these waves of good red, green, yellow, blue light, right? Um Namo Bhagavate. Why not? Purely in photography, anybody remember? You're all too young. Chin Forsher is probably the only, uh, Chin Wei, Chin Yang Shu. We're the only two who would remember Curly in photography from the book Psychic Discoveries Behind the Iron Curtain. Anybody remember? Oh man, that was a big deal. I haven't started my lecture yet. Here I am rambling, rambling, rambling. 
Let me hold on to that story, all right? Well, remind me so I don't forget it. Here we go. Okay. Avatamsaka Sutra, here we come. Here we are. Here it is. Right there. Okay, we have, let me double check, make sure my original sound is on. Okay, and, oops. We want to share my screen. Sorry? Don't need audio. Okay. So that doesn't matter. Mm. Here we go. I'll give you a line, you give it back. Ready? Ro jen yi che fa. Ro jen yi che fa. Ban xing ru nie pan. Shi zai jen ru lai. Jiu jing wu so ju. Chinese choir, it's nice. If you should see all dharmas, how their basic nature is like nirvana, how their basic nature is like nirvana, you then perceive the Tathagatas, you then perceive the Tathagatas, how they ultimately abide nowhere. Ultimately abide nowhere. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. Ro, if, qian, si. That's an eye with legs. See that character? This one right here? See my cursor? That's an eye, mu, on the top, and it's got two legs. So when your eyes go running out on two legs, you can see things. You'll remember that. So... What happens when you see something? Your eyes run out to catch it. E1, that's an easy one. That's everybody's first Chinese character. E. Chie. Okay. Yi chie together means all. And there's our old friend Dharma, Fa. It's got a three dot water. And that right side is a, is a phonetic. That's not a picture. So... If see all dharmas, that would be pure Chinglish, right? Right? Nigga, yo shou bian, shou wei de sheng yin bu shou mei you shou mei yi si, ha? Nigga, chu yi zi mei you la. Na. Okay. So actually, it's um, for those of you who are currently studying Chinese or considering studying Chinese in the future, you should know something like 15% of all the roughly 45,000 available Chinese characters are actual pictures. It's not the case that every character is a pictogram of something in the real world. 15% are. And in this case, that eye that I pointed to for Tian to see is an actual picture of an eye. It developed from a drawing of the eye with the, the cornea and the pupil and so some, some of them are, some 15%. The other 85% have to do with sound, mostly. Okay, so. If you see all dharmas, comma, bun, fundamental, original, xing, nature, ru, like, niapan, nirvana, comma, so hold that thought, if you can see how all things in the world, in their fundamental nature, are just like nirvana, comma, right? More, more to come. Shi zai jian ru lai. Oh, look at jian. There it is again. Same one. See that and that? This then see ru lai tathagata. Then you see the Buddha. Jiu jing wu so zhu, comma. And how the Buddha, Jiu Jing, ultimately without anywhere abiding. 
you see the Buddha, how the Buddha doesn't live anywhere. Now, you could interpret that to say, you see how the Buddha is homeless, but that would probably not be the best interpretation, that he lives nowhere. Wuso Ru has nowhere to live. That's the same phrase as our famous line from the Diamond Sutra that the Sixth Patriarch got enlightened to. You know our story? Sixth Patriarch was, was selling wood. He was an industrious young man. He and his mom lived together. He was the sole support for his family. So what did he do? Went up in the mountains, brought home firewood on his back. The more he could carry, the more, he could, more money he could make. Came down into the village and sold it. Traded it for money. One day, he was delivering firewood to the home of a Buddhist, this unnamed person who, who was essential for launching the career in Dharma of the Sixth Patriarch. And he heard this unnamed Buddhist reciting the Vajra Sutra, the Diamond Sutra. And the person recited, Ying Wu So Zhu Er Sheng Qi Xin. Right here, Wu So Zhu. You should Wu So Zhu as you think. Right? You know how that, we worked and worked and worked to get a good translation for Ying Wu So Zhu Er Ying is, it's good to, you should, it's a good idea. We advise you to Sheng Qi Xin have thoughts, to think thoughts. Sheng, to give birth to, to, to create qi, your xin, thoughts. Wu so zhu, don't live anywhere as you think things. Now that makes no sense, right? That's Chinglish. So what it means is, when you think, don't stop with them. Don't think the thought and then rethink it and then think it again and then react to that thought and then react to the reaction. Don't false think. Sixth Patriarch heard that and went, oh, I get it. That's advice on how to deal with thoughts in the mind. And how many times have I heard from cultivators who say, Dharma Master, what do I do when I have trouble in my mind, when I have bad thoughts? Am I a bad person? There are people who have asked me that question a lot, right? What do I do when I have nasty thoughts? Ying wu so zhu er sheng qi xin. You should not stop your thoughts. Don't, the, the traditional translation was don't dwell. Dwell nowhere as you think thoughts. Well, that's not language we use. What do you mean don't dwell anywhere? That mean be homeless, don't have an address. This is talking about virtual addresses, right? Give up your website. No, that's not what it's about. What it's saying is when thoughts arise, don't cling to them. Don't judge your thoughts and then react emotionally to them. Because why? The nature of thoughts is they come and go and come and go and come and go. Like waves hitting the shore. That doesn't mean you don't pay attention to your thoughts. You know your thoughts. And if you have lots of nasty thoughts, don't act on them. You have to use, Scherfer would say, use decisive wisdom on the spot and say, oh, that's a nasty thought. I really shouldn't kill my mother. You know, I really shouldn't. So I had that image in my mind of throttling my mother because she's just such a pain in the neck. And you go, yeah, that's not a, that's not, that's not a proper thought. That's an unfilial thought. That, wouldn't, that would probably impede my cultivation if I killed my mother, right? But sometimes you just get so upset with your mom because she's, she doesn't get you. She do, she's in the way of your desires to do things, right? So moms are like that. So what do you do when you have a thought like that? Is you go, oh, that's a bad thought. I'll let that one go. Psh, hits the shore. There's another one behind it. You know, mom is really pretty good to me. And maybe I should maybe kind of change my behavior around my mom. Maybe if I were in my mom's shoes and I had the daughter that was me or the son that was me, Maybe I would be even harder on me because why I'm a pain in the neck to my mom. Ah, that's a different thought, isn't it? You know what you do with that thought? Whoosh, let that one go. 
So refusing, what does it mean? Wu so zhu. Right there. Not that which lives. Don't stop with those thoughts. Don't think them and think them again. Reacting to them emotionally and then judging yourself and then hating yourself and then on and on. We tie ourselves in knots not knowing how to react to the thoughts in our mind. That's what that phrase means. It doesn't mean don't live anywhere while you, thi while you think. And all the different ways that we've tried to translate that over the years, right? So this is profound self-analysis. This is real, useful Buddhist psychology. What to do with our thoughts. That's the mind ground. We weed them. You weed your thoughts. You prune your thoughts. You don't cherish them. You don't hate them. Right? So that's what it means. So, that's not what's being said here, though. It's the same phrase. That's our point. That I gave you a digression into the Sixth Patriarch Sutra because that was how the Sixth Patriarch woke up. He heard that bit of wisdom from the Diamond Sutra and he went, whoa, that's deep. Yes. Yeah, and he was such a pure soul and his, you could say, his potentials, his, his uh, preparation was so profound that all it took was one line of wisdom and his mind went click, everything lined up and the darkness went away. But it's, that's the phrase. Don't stop with thoughts. Uh, how are we translating it? Do anybody know? Jin Chuan, you remember? Once again, let your, mind be unattached let your mind be unattached when you let your mind be un let your mind be unattached, comma cling to nothing. Is that it? Cling to nothing. Give me some nothing, and I'll cling to it. I want some of that nothing so I can cling because I need to cling on something. Um, I had a. Uh, a non-clinging, I had a clinging experience in Toledo, which was, uh, you know our, how we love Folkmanis companies puppets? Um, we went to Folkmanis puppet manufactory uh, before I went to Australia last time, and came back with a beautiful panda, a panda that's about this big. And it's really, really nice panda. Their, their puppets are the best because they talk and they're, physiologically accurate, you know. So I took that panda and gave it to my sister for Christmas. And, you know, my sister is, she's six, she's in her sixth decade. I won't say how old she is. She's in her sixth decade. And she's a distinguished former psychotherapist, you know, professional person. She saw the panda and went, oh, oh they're so cute. She was so happy. And she clung, she clung to that pen. <laughs> just, I don't, I don't think I know anybody who wouldn't, because it was just so huggable and squeezable, you know. So that's an experience of clinging. So, uh, Jin Chuan, I'm sorry, one more time. It is. Oh, he's got his mask back on. I should have told you. The mic is right there. Okay, here we go. This is beat. This is our latest translation of the Vajra Sutra. So I think if you were to look at the new Six Patriarch Sutra, you'll see it says, let your mind be unattached, clinging to nothing. Let your mind be unattached, clinging to nothing. Okay. Or clinging to pandas. Probably gives you more comfort, I suspect. But it's temporary, because when the panda's gone, then you're back to clinging to nothing. So let your mind be unattached, clinging to nothing. There you go. So that's good advice for people who are serious about watching their thoughts, which is the mind ground teaching. And let's say, let's say you've decided that you're going to do that. You're going to prune the mind ground. You're going to cultivate the garden in your mind. And all you come up with are nasty thoughts. You know what? You're further ahead than you were before you knew that your mind was full of nasty thoughts. Knowing them, recognizing them, means sooner or later, you'll put them in order. 
before, especially if our thoughts were clouded with holiday cheer, meaning, you know, eggnog with brandy in it and whatever substance we were celebrating with during the winter holidays. What do people drink at Christmas? You know, I don't need to know. That's all right. Tea. We drink tea at Christmas. Apple cider, we do, mold cider, mold cider. So whatever stuff we're putting in your bloodstream before, it makes it way harder to know what is coming up. That's a good reason to limit our intake of intoxicants so that when those thoughts arise, we can go, oh man, how why am I wanting to kill my mom? You know, that's, that can't be right. Before those thoughts arose, and we were the nasty presence around the Christmas dinner table, thinking those thoughts and think, you know, not even knowing, putting out that, you know, kind of, uh, what do you say, clinging to those thoughts. So knowing that they're there is way, way better. And then going, yeah, that's not a good thought. I'm not going to cling to that one. Letting them go. Now, real skill, where it gets subtle, is when there's joyful, happy thoughts and we don't cling to them either. That's real Kung Fu. When you have a, you know, a loving thought. I should really be better to my mom. I should be kinder to my mom. She, she gave me a lot. She gave me her looks. She gave me her youth. You know, and she did it out of the goodness of her heart. Um, and we have that thought. Therefore, I should, you know, just thank my mom all day long. What do you? What's wrong with you? It's enough. I just, no, don't, you know. Of course I love you. Leave me alone, <laughs> you know. So that's letting those thoughts go too is skill. So neither loving them nor rejecting them, but staying alert to them constantly is, is wisdom. That's the, in that same sutra, the Sixth Patriarch Sutra, we've got the cultivator Wo Lun, who comes up to the sixth patriarch and says, you know what, my mind never moves. What about me? And the sixth patriarch says, my mind moves all the time. I've got no Kung Fu. That doesn't mean he's not paying attention. So subtle, it is. And yet that's the skill, is you know when your thoughts are harmful or hateful or nasty or greedy, and you react to them the same way you would react to a room full of COVID virus, which is you don't go into public spaces unmasked. You don't walk through an airport without a vaccination because you know that there's nastiness there, but you come out the other side just fine because you didn't do, you didn't let it cling. You didn't cling to it. You didn't let it sit. All right. So now let's apply that wisdom from the sixth patriarch telling us how to react to the stuff in our own minds. Oh, let me, one more comment here. One of the things to appreciate about the Buddha Dharma is that accurate view of people. Which is to say, you know what? My mind is capable of poison. My mind is capable of really nasty thoughts. And here's what a grown-up human does is you take responsibility for the nastiness in your mind and clean it up. Isn't that nice? Instead of saying something like, oh, let go and let God. <laughs> you know, God will clean it up for me. You know. Meanwhile, those thoughts arise and you go out and get an AR-15 and pull the trigger. Or you, you, know, you drown it and ignore it thereby making no progress along the path. Let somebody else clean it up or ignore it, pretend it's not there, neither one of which is real. So the, the Buddha Dharma's reality approach to the real power source, which is my next thought, your next thought, that's one reason why we continue day after day after day to work with the Dharma and apply it to the mind. Okay, now, our Bodhisattva here in the Avatamsaka Sutra is giving us, t kicking it up a level. What does he say? If you can look at all things in the world, 
and understand how their nature is like nirvana, then you are able to see the Buddha and ultimately you will be, you'll get to that place in your thoughts where ultimately you cling to nothing. All right, now to make sense of this, we have to know what's the nature of nirvana and what do the Tathagatas look like? All right, in that verse, we have two powerful Sanskrit words. These, this is that, those four lines, whoa, whoa, we are coded with Dharma code. Nirvana, nirvana, that phrase. It's one of the first Buddhist words we ever heard, right? Kind of, uh, if, if somebody says, who knows pretty much nothing about Buddhism. They know the Buddha, the Buddha is the peace guy. That's one thing they know. And nirvana is what you want. Better than heaven, nirvana. So what is nirvana? Um, one is, it's the opposite of samsara, another Sanskrit word. So what is samsara? Samsara is, means continuing continuity. It goes on and on and on and on and on. What goes on and on? The answer is birth and death. Come back. We come back. We get born again. Oh, go through the whole process. Get old, get sick, die again, get born again. That's samsara. Just like a, the there's lots of, now lots of imagery, the river of suffering, the ocean of suffering. They say this shore is birth and death, that shore is nirvana, and in between is affliction, trouble, the blues, misery, sheng lao bing si ku, birth, old age, sickness and death, and all the misery that happens, just life. Life goes on. And man, so I complain living here in the monastery when it, it drops below 60. And can you imagine being in Ukraine? Kiev is, is a you know, major modern city. Kiev, life in Kiev is pretty good until the missiles start coming down and there's no electricity. It's cold in Ukraine in the winter. Can you imagine having no heat at all and having to, to generate your own heat? Then there's no water because the Russian missiles are knocking out the water. All the, and what's it like living there? It's like, oh, my body is suffering because it's cold and there's no water to drink or flush or cook with. That's a lot of dukkha, right? So samsara is continuing like this having a body that is, its needs are, needs are not being met. And then, oh, everybody I'm looking at here is masked. They're all wearing masks. And I'm not, but everybody is. And why? It's because having a body is not a great deal <laughs> when there's a deadly, fatal virus floating around. So that's the state of human beings in the world samsara. Now, the opposite is nirvana, which is ending. The, the Chinese words, check these words out. Here we go. Let's see if I can, not that one, thank you. Let's see here. Uh, is it this one? Yes. Okay, check out those three Qi mie xing. Still, qi is like stillness, is a serenity. Mie, this is one of those wonderful pictures that talks about it. You can, it, it, it describes its own meaning. Okay, outside, see those three dots? That's water. Then the one that looks like that, that's a shelter. And inside those four dots, that's fire. And beside it, the one that's like this, 
that's a spear or a weapon. So the water is coming to extinguish the fire and the weapons inside the shelter. It means to extinguish, to put out, to end. Cessation. Mia, it's called. So serenity and cessation, nirvana. Xing is nature. So the nature of all dharmas have the nature of cessation, serenity, and stillness. So that's nirvana. It's a stopping. It's a ceasing of what? Of the continuity, of the endless rolling on of more birth, more death, more birth, more death. Why is this hard to grasp? It's because we don't see our next incarnation and we have, can't see our past incarnation. So we have to take it from people whose vision goes beyond this life. And this is one of those teachings that we have to kind of take on faith. And it was what when it, it so I'm it's my job to sit here and pump some air into the, the words of the sutra, try to illustrate the these ideas to make them come alive. It's harder when you yourself don't have experience of certain dharma teachings like rebirth, karma. And in order to be able to explain that from experience, I would have to have psychic vision. I would have to have, you know, tian yan, deva, celestial vision, or su ming tong, knowledge of past lives, and I don't. So I have to take it on faith. You have to take it on faith. But not only Buddhist teachers say deeds from the past create my reality, deeds in the present create my future. Past deeds create what I'm experiencing now, present deeds create what's going to happen, what will come. So take it on faith. Not only Buddhists say that, but you know, Hebrew sages, as you sow, so shall you reap. What we plant now is going to come. That's, and when people would press Master Hua, Shifu, why should we believe that there is a future life? He would say, don't. But, do you believe there's going to be a tomorrow? Do you believe there was a yesterday? Well, it's kind of hard to, you know, kind of hard to deny. Do you believe you had lunch today? Yeah, because I haven't brushed my teeth and I still got some of that, you know. So there's proof that I... Sherpa would try to pin it down to something real. So we have to take this on faith, but why not? The Buddha was not cheating us. He wasn't trying to trick us. He wasn't trying to sell books or become a YouTube star. He was moved by compassion to share his vision of how the world is built. And there are these phenomena going on, which is continuity of rebirth and with nirvana, cessation of that. Now, the thing about nirvana that surprised me when I looked into it was there are multiple nirvanas. There's not just one flavor. The Buddha's nirvana is called Maha Pari Nirvana, the great ultimate nirvana, where all of the subtle seeds of becoming are over. So his garden has been completely weeded and see how does that <laughs> I'm, I'm locked into an analogy that doesn't sound very attractive a garden with no seeds in it so to say that the Mahapari Nirvana is the, the ultimate final Nirvana um, Arhats 
reach a kind of nirvana, they say, with residue, with remainder. So first stage, second stage, third stage, fourth stage, our hot ship are increasing levels of cessation, but there's more to come. The, uh, when you, this is kind of Buddhist, this is the, what, graduate level Dharma study is going in and investigating the different levels of nirvana. And Buddhist dictionaries will, will give them to you. It's enough for us today, tonight for the purposes of this lecture to know that there's, there's more than one level of this cessation. And what does it have to do with? It has to do with how deep in your own mind you go. So they talk about arhats put an end to what is called fen duan sheng si, share and section, birth and death, comes to an end. If you put an end to desire the way an arhat does. Bodhisattvas, on the other hand, go to what is called they put an end to what is called bian yi sheng si, transformation, birth and death, which is a way, way deeper, subtler form of nirvana that bodhisattvas, through what? Through their samadhi. They end a, more d a deeper and a more subtle form of birth and death. Now, you tell that to cultivators of the arhat path and they might get a little upset. Oh, you think you got a better nirvana than I do, huh? Put them up. <laughs> so, but that's the way the Mahayana teaches it, is that there are different levels of cessation. And it has to do with activity in the mind. That, there's another invention. If somebody wants to come up with a nirvana scope uh, to measure the real subtle. And where do we, we don't have to go to, you know, fisticuffs with the Theravada. I would like to hear Bhikkhu Bodhi's uh, explanation because I'm sure this is Abhidharma. Abhidharma goes into the fluctuations of the mind at a subtle level. That's what Abhidharma is famous for doing. They tell you how many births and deaths there will be in a single instant of thought. The Bodhisattva goes to a more subtle level. Okay, so it's enough to know that there's more than one level of nirvana. That's one of our Sanskrit words. We got another Sanskrit word, Tathagata, here. What is Tathagata? Tathagata is a Buddha. Ru, Lai, Tata, Agata. One who comes like this. And I've always had a problem thus come come one who comes I've always had a problem trying to make sense of that one and what is the this that the bodhisattva comes like as I tried to grab it and I think I think just getting the words we're not getting the whole picture I believe it's a title right and the thus that the bodhis that the Buddha comes like I think has a gesture along with it Sometimes words come with a gesture, you know, the famous French shrug, eh? Comme ci, comme ça, oui, c'est ça, c'est tout, you know. So I think thus come has a, like that with it. The, the, what you're trying to do is identify somebody who has inhabited their Dharma body. What is the Dharma body? It's everything. It's this this being non-specific. It's not this that you need to point out. It's the Tathagata comes like this. That's my understanding of what the Agata is. Or the, the, the Tata. That's the first half of that word. Tata Agata. Tata. Put it together, Tathagata. I think it, it's like this. All of this. The Buddha comes with all of this intact, the entire body. Most of us, we come with this, you know, I like this, I hate this, I want this, don't look at me now, I'm having a bad hair day, I'm angry with you, I'm gonna give you the stink eye, I hope you see it, you know. That, that's how we come, <laughs> we come with way less, you know, or we narrow it down to the next word or the next thought. Or 
satisfying appetite. That's how we come. But the Buddha comes with everything intact. Three bodies. Last week we talked about the three bodies, right? So, okay, is that, what do you make, how, what sense do you make? Jin Chuan, define Tathagata. Please. Ta is a uh, Ru. So the uh, uh, thus come one, so the thus is the tata. And the gata is actually quite interesting because gata is to go, or it can also mean to come. With the a in front, it can be a, I think the gate, so gate is go, and then agata is come. Come. So be thus come one or the thus gone one. And it's a play on the Sanskrit word because the, the tata has an A in between the next word, which is the gata or the agata. And so it's a kind of a play that the, it could be a thus come one or a thus gone one, or is neither come nor gone. Uh -huh. So it's, it's got this play that the, the tagata doesn't move, doesn't come nor go, See? or comes or goes. So in Sanskrit, it's actually a lot of these words that have this kind of play with them. Yeah. Sugata. Sugata. Tell that one. Well gone. Well gone. Well gone. The one who's gone well, well. Well gone well. Gata. Su. Sugata. 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 People would call him that. Okay, thank you for that. Neither come nor gone. Sanskrit wordplay. Those whimsical Sanskritists making jokes with the Buddha's title, by golly. So... Tathagata. Now, why is that helpful? That's helpful because, park that one, sometimes we want to sing it. And Fang si da mo ba zhuo, ji mie xing zhong sui yin zhuo, zhu hang wu chang yi che kong, qi shi ru lai da yuan jue. You all enlightened so far? That's the song of enlightenment. You should be. Elements for just set aside, attach to them no more. In stillness and cessation, you eat just like before. Everything's impermanent, empty, over, and done. This is the great awakening of the thus come one. told me that if I do full screen, it helps. There we go. Okay. So, elements four, set them aside. Earth, air, fire, and water. Don't attach to them. Wu so zhu. In stillness and cessation, in that nirvana state, guess what? You still have to eat lunch. You still eat. Even though birth and death for you has ceased, you still get dressed in the morning, you still check your email. Everything's impermanent in that state. It's empty. It's over. It's done. That's what the Buddha woke up to. This is the great awakening of the Tathagata, the Rulai. So what is this? This is master, the master from Yongjia, Master Shenzhi is singing about Nirvana and the Tathagata. This is like, I think, verse stanza number four out of 63. So... 
elements four just set aside attached to them no more in stillness and cessation you eat just like before everything's impermanent empty over and done this is the great awakening of the thus come one or as bob dylan would sing it elements four just set aside attached to them no more in stillness and cessation you eat just like before Everything's impermanent, empty, over, and done. This is the great awakening of the thus come one. That's not a bad imitation, Bob Dylan. By the way. So, uh, what is it? It's integrating everyday physical behavior with the awakened state. Um, the one who has come like this, the Tathagata. What do we say? Um, we reverse engineer back into prose and we say pay no attention to the states of your physical body those states will not reward you and to realize the way you cannot take those states as real and seek their comfort above all else even after you realize nirvana you still carry on with life's normal processes as you did before you wake up in no way different and mind you if those states are scary you don't run away from them or think that you're crazy. You see through them. You cling to nothing. Enlightened people still eat and drink normally, so don't pretend to a special style either. No matter where you look around the world, you won't be able to find anything that is lasting or substantial or real. All is vanity, says the book of Ecclesiastes in the Old Testament. All is transient. The Buddha's realization was just this. He saw through the illusion of conditioned things and realized their transient nature. This realization extended to his own body and senses. There is, in fact, nothing to hold on to. Okay, Cliff or Sam, how are you doing with the translation of this? That's not really not fair, right? <laughs> Ouch, that's hard to translate. But that's the Zheng Dao Ge, the Song of Enlightenment, talking about this very, oops, I'm going to keep that. This very process, this very verse that the Avatamsaka Sutra is also sharing with us. This is Hung Lin Pusa, the Bodhisattva forest of practices, who is giving us our, oops, wrong text. There we go. There's the right text giving us our Avatamsaka Sutra today. Let's review it. If you should see all dharmas, how all things in creation are just like nirvana, they neither come nor go, then you see the Buddhas. And you see how ultimately Buddhas don't stop anywhere. That's the Buddha. And you go, oh, Although I can't say it's my state, I get a flavor from it, which is a flavor you won't get anywhere else. And what's valuable about this? Um, when bad news comes, remembering that there are people who can inspire me to get to a place where I'm not knocked down by bad news and I'm not overjoyed and thrilled by good news to the point where I lose my ground. Even the worst news, when things we care deeply about leave us, with this insight, you can find room for that in your heart without getting knocked off your feet. To realize that the worst things that can happen to a body is only a chapter in a longer story of my life. We borrow the Buddha's vision to put a context around this experience here. And now, they, this too will pass. And you know what? There's more to come. <laughs> There's more ahead. 
just like this. So, a wise, compassionate person gets to work on the next thought, making it as painless and as wholesome for self and others as you can. Be good to people. Because why? We'll see them again, and their experience is the same as mine. Be good to critters. I don't know. I uh, somehow, the uh, Instagram algorithms really watch what you're doing. My Instagram feed is full of kindness to animals <laughs> stories. Uh, the uh, not just dodo, but other ones these days, about uh, lonely animals who lose their companion and then find a best friend with another species, right? A dog and a lamb, you know, a puppy and a duck, uh, even uh, manatees coming up. And story after story after story of kindness to animals and how it repays. Lots of infinite stories about dogs that are abused and terrified and then a little bit of kindness shown to a dog. You take the fleas out and you the ticks and, and feed them regularly and clean them. And this dog that you could count every single rib in its body turns into this wonderful loving creature that is just all kindness and playfulness. The dog nature arises when it's encouraged and given the chance to grow. And all these images of cows, cows that come and sit in their owner's laps. <laughs> Have you seen those? You know, a, a thousand pound cow wants to become a lap calf, <laughs> a lap cow with the owner and the and cows that purr. Have you heard that? There are these videos, unbelievable. How the bovine nature is a loving, kind nature and cares about its offspring and cares about its human tender minder who feeds. It's just so obvious that we all share a similar makeup. And Master Hua would say to us, he would say, cause and effect is so true. Be good to people. Don't be bad to people because why? It's coming for you. Whatever we send out will come back because number one, we're all connected. Number two, because of continuity, samsara, it goes on. And to think that somehow we get away with being mean, that it kind of goes, falls out of empty space, it does not. It's right there. Kind of like wrapping yourself up in a, in a long hoodie and then farting, right? <laughs> what is it just that, ooh, that smell, you know? It's like, who did that? That was not me, you know? Oh yeah, that smell. It's karma, you can't, karma doesn't have any smell. Oh yes, it does. And we are, I am the owner of my karma, heir to my karma, abide supported by my karma. Whatever karma I do, for good or for ill, of this I will be the heir. Right. So, next one. Ready? Another one. We're okay. Here we go. Ro Xu Xi Zheng Nian. Your turn. Ming Liao Jian Zheng Jue. Wu Xiang Wu Fen Bie. Shi Ming Fa Wang Zi. Nice. If you cultivate right mindfulness, if you cultivate right mindfulness, clearly seeing right enlightenment, clearly seeing, free from characteristics and discriminations. <laughs> Nobody's ever tried to sing a line like that, right? A, that's got a certain lilt to it, free from characteristics and discrimination, right? No, free from characteristics and discriminations. 
Nat King Cole singing, uh, no, okay. Such a one is called the Prince of Dharma. Maybe Billie Eilish could get away with it, but not me. Okay. So, if you cultivate right mindfulness, ah, there's a phrase we know. Clearly seeing right enlightenment, there's jung, that word is at play here, which is free from characteristics and discriminations. Somebody like that is the Fawangsa. That's the prince of Dharma. That's the king of wisdom. Okay, here it is. Ro, same as above. Remember, if, if. So it's a hypothetical. Xiuxi, if you cultivate and practice, this is, in China, that's a taboo name now. That's the name of the general secretary, Xi. Zheng Nian, if you practice Zheng, this is the word meaning right, correct, the right way. Nian, if you, what do you, how do you get to Zheng Nian? You weed it. You, cult, you prune it. You pay attention to those thoughts. Exactly what we were talking about earlier. That's how we get to Zheng Nian is by making it Zheng. If it's crooked, straightening it up. If it's crooked here, straighten it up. If it's not enough, you add. If it's too much, you reduce it. You get to Zheng. And, that's comma, and Ming, there's one of the, the pictograms. What is it? Left side is the sun. It's funny, it looks like the eye. Here's our, where's our, here, right here. Okay, character number three, that one. See the eye? It's got two horizontal strokes. Look over here, one horizontal stroke. That's the sun. Interesting, how subtle. One difference, one is the sun. Brr. And it was a picture of the sun. The other is mu, the eye, two strokes. So, got to see clearly. But what's beside the sun? The moon. That's a picture of the crescent moon. Put the sun and the moon together, and it means light, bright, or clear. By, extens by extension, it means to understand. Ming bai. Well, Ming Bai, I clearly understand it. I'm clear about it. Ming Bai, I understand. So you clearly liao, even though it's simple, that's a two stroke character with a brush, top, and then the bottom. You clearly understand, you clearly qian, we learned that already, seeing, that's the eye that runs out to see things. Zheng, same one, correct, jue, awakening. Back to our first phrase. If you cultivate right mindfulness and you clearly see right awakening, then, as comma, wu xiang, wu fen bie, furthermore, you understand no features. This is, uh, I was listening to uh, Andy Ferguson, Professor Ferguson, who gave a talk at DRBU. Anybody catch that talk live? He was talking about Bodhidharma. Anybody? Any DRBU students last semester? Okay. So uh, the Arts Initiative at DRBU invited Professor Ferguson to talk about Bodhidharma. He's, uh, Andy is, lives in Sonoma. He's, he's a local uh, Dharma friend of the monastery. He's uh, really learned about the ancestors of his Chan. Uh, Andy has taken tours to China along many, many Zen tours over. Anyway, he talked about Wuxiang. He said our Chan school, this is one of the underlying truths of Chan, which is what? No trace. What's that? It's that when you, you understand from meditation that a big part of wisdom is beyond your eyes' ability to see, it's beyond your ears' ability to hear, it's beyond your nose and tongue's ability to taste or smell. It's nothing you can touch. 
Furthermore, you can think about it, but the thoughts about it are not the real thing, but it's still real. A big part of our experience of the Dharma happens beyond our senses. That doesn't make it unreal. And it's right up front talking about it, which can make you nervous. I came to study Buddhism and you're telling that there's nothing to know and nothing to get because you can't talk about it and you can't see it. What's the point? Well, I got a device here that depends a lot on stuff that I can't see. Right? Right this minute, I'm operating with a wireless mic. And the ability for you to hear my voice depends on something you can't see. We, we're surrounded by reality that we can't see, that we totally depend on. Isn't it? Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, phone transmission, x-rays, ultraviolet, infrared. All those things are beyond my eyes and ears' ability to recognize, but I depend on them. Wuxiang. No trace, no characteristics, but real all the same. Is that, does that help? I don't know. We, our religion, our practices, our faith, our teaching, our school is busy describing things that our senses can't detect. Doesn't mean they're not real. So coming to grips with that is to me, that, that doesn't turn me off. That doesn't discourage me to know that a lot of wisdom has to do with things like what? Intuition. Somebody says, oh, I have a feeling. Oh, you're just kind of intuitive, huh? No, 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 you're a f airy fairy fantasy. Get real. Yeah. Not everything in the world can be bought and sold. Not everything in the world has a price tag on it. Some of the best stuff can't be grabbed. Happiness. Show me happiness. And somebody says, a puppy. <laughs> that's happy. Yeah. So, true. But that's an external aspect of the feeling that has no way to measure. And yet it's absolutely... Who wants to live without happiness? So, it's so neat to have the Dharma be so real and talking about things that are beyond our senses' ability. So what's the word for it in Buddhism? Bukha su yi. Inconceivable doesn't mean not real. Wu Xiang, says Professor Ferguson, is a key to understanding. It's a, it's, a, it's a gateway, it's a door into Chan. It's a fundamental understanding is that when, you, when we get it, there's nothing to get. It is Wu Xiang. Furthermore, it is, see that Wu again? No, not. It is Wu Fen Bie. This Fen is a chunk, a piece, a slice. Notice the inner, the bottom part of that is a knife, Tao. That bottom half of that character, and the top part is eight, Ba. Something that's sliced into eight chunks is to divide up, to cut up. And then, bie, here, the right side, is that same knife, only written in an alternate form. The left side is, is phonetic here. But fun bie means to discriminate, to cut up, to slice up, to dis differentiate. Think of a cleaver. You, ever, you have a cook who does two cleavers? Watch out, Lehi. Right? Really fast, high quality, high, high capacity chefs chopping up carrots and bites high. So, fun be it. None of that. You don't discriminate in the mind. What do you do instead? You put together, you integrate, you reform, you re include, recollect, you recollect instead of chopping up. Wisdom heals those splits and includes instead of finding 
reductionist. If we get the smallest, we can know the biggest. Well, that's a basic principle of Newtonian approach to science. But there is an integrative function, too, where everything's like a mirror. Nothing is excluded. That's wisdom. The Buddha is able to do both functions. Most of us were here with the discriminating, like language. Depends on hearing subtle, right? We've had Ming, the sun there, one stroke in between. Two strokes, totally different. It's the eye. You have to distinguish between them. However, the mind of the Buddha coming from right f mindfulness and right awakening is able to function in the place where there's no distinction, no discrimination, and no characteristics. That's the Buddha's wisdom. It's the Dharma realm. It's the place of principle. That's somebody called Fa Wangzi, the prince of Dharma. Praises are done. Thank you for us to practice Bodhisattva for praising the Buddha. How interesting, right? These praises in the heaven of the Suyama palace, the palace of the Suyama heaven, so different. Every Bodhisattva sings something different. And they're, they're describing the Buddha. They're not saying, Buddha's great, Buddha's good, let us thank you for this food. Amen. Sometimes they do. Mostly they're talking about his qualities. The qualities of the Dharma. What's coming up next? Everybody's favorite set of praises. Starting next week, we dive into Jue Lin Pusa, Forest of Awakening, and he talks about the master artist, the painter, who, the way a skillful painter arranges colors and hues in the palette before shaping the many illusory images, among the elements that he paints with, there's no discrimination. The master painter of the, the universe. So that's coming up. Those are, uh, this, uh, this is one of those sections of the sutra that comes out and has its own uh, identity, right? Like the, the last verse in the Vajra Sutra, dreams, meng huan pao ying ru lu yi ru dian ying zuo ru shi guan. You know that one? That one comes out of the Vajra Sutra to its own status. Like dreams, like bubbles, like illusions, like a lightning flash, like a dewdrop. All conditioned dharmas are this way. Contemplate them like that. That's a famous, famous verse from the Vajra Sutra. The Avatamsaka has lots of them. Uh, if somebody wants to know all Buddhas of the three periods of time, watch the nature of the mind. Everything is made. Inguan, watch the nature of the Dharma realm. Everything's made from the mind alone. That's one of those independent verses that kind of floats out from the Sutra. So next week we begin Chuelian Bodhisattva's verses. They, they are rightfully famous. All righty. Thank you all for your patience. My goodness. Um, I was going to talk some about Bodhidharma if we ran short of things to talk about, but we don't. So, oh, I will say, um, tomorrow night, 7.30, on another YouTube channel called CTTB Live, I'm going to be... So there we go. 73, 73 in the audience, the Chinese listening audience with Dr. Wong translating. Thank you, Kevin. Um, do we know how many on the Vietnamese side? Can you ask them, Jerry? That would be nice to know. Um, anyway, tomorrow night, 7.30, I'm going to be talking to the City of 10,000 Buddhas Chan session which is a virtual Chan session. The nuns are working very hard in person. Um, the men are cultivating on their own. But from 7.30 to 8.30, an hour only, I'll be doing the Chan session talk next week and the following week 
uh, to the end of the Chan session. And I'll be talking about the Zheng Dao Ge, Song of Awakening, of which we heard one verse tonight. Meanwhile, we've got Buddha carols to enjoy. It helps to have grown up with these carols every year, every year. If you didn't have Christmas carols in your background, this won't be as fun. But O western land of utmost bliss, how pure we see thee lie. Your lotus flowers gave birth to us, our karma purify. The vows of Amitabha, the one of limitless light, saves everyone who says his name, reborn in pure delight. That's a pretty good Buddha carol. I, that's all right. You want to try it again? Everybody knows? You know, you know the original? O little town of Bethlehem. O little town of Bethlehem, how still we see thee lie. Above thy deep and dreamless sleep, the starless sky goes by. Yet in thy dark... Anyway, so... Here we go. Ready? O western land of utmost bliss, how pure we see thee lie. Your lotus flowers gave birth to us, our karma purified. The vows of Amitabha, the one of limitless light, saves everyone who says his name, reborn in pure delight. There you go. Buddhists shouldn't be deprived at Christmas time. We should have our own carols to sing. Now, everybody knows this one. See here. This goes really high, so we have to pick. Detached from them all, sit in heavenly peace, sit and contemplate. One more time, silent mind, holy mind, all is calm, all. Passion of thoughts rise and fall 
with clear insight detached from them all sit in heavenly peace sit and contemplate nice gee whiz somebody's hitting those high notes it's nice to hear them now there's another a Buddhist who I don't know, but he, I assume it's a he, tried his best. It was Bhante Yogabhachara Rahula, I don't know him, um, who did another version of Silent Night, but somehow this Bhante heard a different melody than I know because he <laughs> expanded it. So anyway, but it's really fun because he's got, I think he emptied out the... Uh, path of purification for meditation states in his. So we can do a little bit and then it kind of goes off the rails. Here we go. Silent night, peaceful night, all is calm, stars are bright, round the hall yogis sitting still, keeping their backs straight, exerting will. Now at this point, <laughs> enduring pain without any ill will, providing metta all throughout space, Wishing goodwill to the whole human race, sitting in loving peace. Oops, sitting. So, you know, that's all right. We can enjoy the lyrics here. Silent mind, peaceful mind, thoughts are pure. Pain is light, focusing mind at the tip of the nose, knowing each breath as it comes and goes. Here we go. Perceiving the light that steadily glows, feeling the rapture from head to the toes. Sitting in rapturous peace, sitting in rapturous peace. Silent mind, tranquil mind, thoughts are stilled, body feels light. I guess it's the second dhyana or something, you're right. The five hindrances have all died down. The ego no longer is squirming around. Mind is one-pointed, not moving a bit. Enjoying at long last, samadhik, bliss. Is samadhik, is that a word? Bliss, sitting in blissful peace. So thank you, Bhante. Silent mind, focused mind, all is calm, mind is bright. The spiritual faculties are prepared. <laughs> Vipassana insight has Mara scared, yeah. <laughs> Scanning the body from head to the toes. Anicca, anicca, each moment goes. More. Form, feeling, perception, empty as foam. <laughs> Ah, Bhante was on a roll here. The five aggregates are completely known, sitting insightful, sitting in insightful joy. Okay, I think he's got two more. Silent mind, equanimous mind. Awareness is strong, wisdom is fine. The six sense impingements, there's a new one. The six sense impingements arise and pass. No desire, no clinging, no ego to grasp. No holding to present, future, or past. Mara has vanished. He has had his last gasp. I like this. You see Mara, oh, I quit, I quit, I quit. This body-mind house is empty at last, sitting and walking the whole night through, greeting the dawn completely new. So he kind of quit on the melody, but his... Lyric Kung Fu is strong. Silent mind, holy mind, conditions are right, now is the time. The enlightenment factors are developed well. The Four Noble Truths become as clear as a bell. The Eye of Dharma is open wide. The Three Lower Fetters are broken in stride. Tonight the yogi enters the stream Tomorrow, nirvana, no longer a dream. Yay, Bhante. Okay. So, it's, you know, this uh, Bhante Yogacar Bahula took his work seriously. We will continue with more Buddha carols next week. There's more to go. Okay, uh, let's see here. So, Jin Chuan Jin Wei, you want to do the, keep our process, you can do the announcements. 
I'll bring up the, is there anything to announce? So I think most of our classes are on winter break. Um, so right now, in terms of our upcoming schedule, we have the dedication of merit for the Great Compassion Mantra on Christmas Day in the morning at 6.30 to 7.30. Um, we do have a, we'll, right now that's the current plan. It might change to another day, but we will let people know if, if that happens. Um, if we keep going down, we still have our regular meditations Thursdays and Fridays. But I think all the other classes, other than the Saturday night lecture, is on pause. Okay, you all know that every day at 12.30, Jin Shi is here, sitting right where I'm sitting, reciting the Buddha's name. And it's really popular. There's a lot of folks who join every day for half an hour. Jin Shi does it with great energy. And people are happy to recite the Buddha's name midday uh, online. Jin Shi, you want to share yeah, we uh, deciding from 12.30 to 1. So that is a great, only 30 minutes. So I think uh, it, it is the time to uh, every day. So we nice start. So it's uh, many years now. Wotini Fani Jungwan. Tashu Panshao so he further said that on Saturdays from 2 to 3, Liang Dian, yeah, Liang Dian Liang Dian, yeah, Liang Dian they begin at 2 p.m. on Saturdays, mm -hmm. uh, that would be today, mm -hmm. and recite the Buddha's name for an hour. Mm -hmm. They used to go for 90 minutes, but people said a little too long. So mm -hmm. 2 to 3. And uh, there's at ni bu bu jiang jing. You say bu bu nian. Ah, you you jiang jing. You you nian jing is bu. Yeah, we have not shared. Like today, we are talking about the Buddha. Ah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Sometimes other topics like Samantha Bhadra Bodhisattva. Yeah. So, mm. in general, two o'clock on Saturdays, you have another chance to expand your Buddha recitation with Jin Po Shi. So it's really popular. That's, uh, I think uh, it's funny because Pure Land is not my first, my first practice. And so all the community, all of the aunties were very patient with me over the years and kind of, you know, Fasher doesn't do that. So Jin Fosher shows up and it's like the most popular event of the week <laughs> is Pure Land. <laughs> Everybody comes and hits the ground bell and, you know, recites. So, so uh, I need to shang ta lai shui xi la. Shang fa si xui xi la. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Okay, and, and I want to let you know that where did it go? Let's see here. I'm looking for our latest good news. Ah, here it is. Ready? Okay, Anat from LA says, I am a leader in the Vietnamese Buddhist Youth Association. Every week we chant our repentance in the Vietnamese language. 
The American-born kids have a hard time understanding the repentance because it's not in English. I've combined many partial translations of our repentance into one translation and also translated some parts of it. So far, I finished 80%. I will finish the rest very soon. It's a good deed from good karma music from Dharma Radio. So you all know what's going on with that? You should. It's Dharma Radio right there. So you go out to dharmaradio.org. There it is. And you go to Good Karma Music right there. Click on that. And we say, do a good deed. Tell us what you did. Choose an album of Buddhist or Catholic spiritual music or stories as well. And we will send it to you for you to enjoy and everybody gets to read your story. So here is Anat's story right there. And we have volunteers, friends who take those good stories and give an illustration and send them around uh, every week. So, so 35 folks are listening on the Vietnamese channel. How many on YouTube, Sherry? 70 some in Chinese. How many? 110. Okay. So, happy holidays in this dark 75, 73 in the Chinese channel. So, uh, the time of solstice, as the light goes dim, we have to be diligent in bringing the light back ourselves. So that's people worldwide choose this time of the year to celebrate light. We Mahayana Buddhists do it with Amitabha. Um, and in a time of pandemic, we can keep this mantra moving and feel like we're contrib contributing something uh, in a time when folks are just uh, worldwide. China right now is undergoing very difficult time um, with COVID. So we can recite and transfer merit on behalf of our friends worldwide. There we go. Okay, we ready? Here we go. Transfer the merit as you see fit. Om Namo Bhagavate Paisajya Guru Vaiduriya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambuddhaya Tadyata Om Bhai Saji Bhai Saji Bhai Sadhya Samudgate Swaha Om Namo Bhagavate Bhai Sadhya Guru Bhai Durya Prabharajaya Tathagataya Arahate Samyak Sambuddhaya Tathyata Om Bhai Saji Bhai Saji Bhai Sadhya Samud Gate Swaha. One more time. Om Namo Bhagavate Bhai Sadhya Guru Bhai Durya Prabharajaya Tathagataya 
Arahate samyak sambuddhaya tajya ta om Pai saji Pai saji Pai sajya Samudgate swaha Sounds better and better. Okay, I don't have my bell with me, so I'm going to invite you to bow. Let's bow to the Buddhas first. Ah, one more time. Try it. Here we go. I want that one. There we go. Ready? Here we go. One bow. Second bow. And third bow. Bow in respect to the Venerable Master. First bow. Second bow. And third bow. Okay, that's going to do it for us this week. Have a week full of blessings and wisdom. Ami Tofo, see you all next time.